distinguished guests, dear children, dear friends and partners. It's a pleasure to join you through this message to commemorate the World Day of Prayer and Action for Children 2023, which is observed on World Children's Day. We cannot commence such a day without expressing our collective rage and sorrow for the huge toll being paid by children worldwide due to ongoing and multiple crises, including the climate crisis. The climate crisis is a threat multiplier for violence against children, exacerbating the drivers of violence such as poverty, food insecurity, loss of education, humanitarian crisis, and displacement, among others. Around the world, one billion children are at extremely high risk of being affected by climate change, natural disasters, and environmental degradation. Over the past six years, there were 43 million internal displacements of children linked to weather-related disasters, the equivalent to approximately 20,000 child displacements per day. 40 million children are having their education disrupted every year because of disasters exacerbated by climate change, and this number continues to increase. Children who bear the least responsibility for the climate crisis are among those paying the highest price for its impact. Children who are already disadvantaged are particularly vulnerable, including those who are deprived of family care, with disabilities, living in humanitarian conflict settings, living in poverty or in rural areas, and those who rely on the natural environment and its resources, such as indigenous children. Despite their vulnerability, children have been ignored in the response to climate change. Children have almost no formal role in climate policy and decision-making, and their voices and views are not duly considered in climate policies. As the UN Committee on the Rights of Child has pointed out in its General Comment 26, taking children's rights and their views into account would lead to more ambitious and effective policies on environmental protection. Let me share three key messages. Children worldwide are speaking up and taking action. I know from my contribution, partners and children themselves, that children worldwide are speaking up, taking initiative, defending their rights to a safe, peaceful, just, healthy and inclusive environment. As environmental and human rights defenders, they practice their activism through social media, community engagement, participation in decision-making processes, peaceful protests and many more. Children are also increasingly using the justice systems as a strong and powerful tool to demand climate justice. These are only a few examples among many. In Colombia, a group of children and youth came together to file the first lawsuit in Latin America on climate change and future generation, and they won. The courts ordered the protection of the Colombian Amazon. In Fiji, Children and young people developed a climate-smart solution to coastal erosion, which entails planting and maintaining mangrove trees to allow the coast to recover. In Kenya, children and young advocates came together for the first ever child-led global climate change summit. Children made strong recommendations on global financial justice, poverty eradication, and climate action, calling on global and African leaders. In Peru, in 2012, a seven-year seven boy created the first bank for children, Eco Banco del Estudiante, which turns trash that children find on streets into money. The bank now has more than 6,000 members aged 10 to 18. In the United States, more than 32,000 children and young people are mobilized in bringing a lawsuit against the government on how their rights have been affected because of the climate crisis. But still, many barriers to child participation remain. We, we need to bear in mind that climate action does not exist as it does today without the powerful contribution of children and youth-led movements worldwide. But the conditions for children's participation are far less than ideal. They are forgotten and invisible, are not aware of their rights, or live in societies where speaking up is hardly possible because it is seen as a breach of social or cultural norms. 
And when children do speak up and advocate for climate justice, they are exposed to various risks, both in person and online, such as violence, repression, stigmatization, harassment, arrest, retaliation, and threats, all posed by adults with authority. This power imbalance makes children even more vulnerable to abuse of power and authority. But these risks can be mitigated by ensuring the protection and empowerment of children through providing safe and equitable access to information, including through digital means. A safe pathway to express themselves, be consulted in decision-making process, and to take action. These steps to protection and empowerment allow children to become aware of their personal safety and that of their peers. This also encourages children to explore their relationship with themselves and others, as well as the environment surrounding them. This might draw a parallel to nurturing children's spiritual and moral development, a process which many families and children themselves might look to religious communities for guidance. In addition, Religious leaders and their communities also have a key role in raising awareness and mobilizing local communities and families as they are often the most interconnected and grassroots social organization. Children's participation carries a significance in the social and emotional development of children. Children who are environmental and human rights defenders feel empowered as active citizens. This sense of belonging, in turn, will help nurture children's trust in informal and formal institutions. Less than seven years remain to achieve the 2030 Agenda. Climate and social justice for all children, leaving no one behind, cannot be achieved without children's active and safe participation. Thank you.